You are now chopping it up with the Nerd Barbershop Podcast. Thank you. Welcome to a brand new episode of the Nerd Barbershop Podcast. I'm Taryn Wood. Thank you so much for clicking on this episode and hanging out with me for a little bit. I know it's been a while since I dropped the podcast. Don't worry, I've been busy. Life has been lifing, but uh, I want to do some more podcasts here and there. It'd be nice if I can do one once a month, but we'll see how that goes. But um, I was thinking about this because I've seen these headlines um, over the last couple of months, and I thought it was something fun to talk about. So is there burnout when it comes to superhero movies? And I've seen it. I've seen different headlines, but they all kind of allude to the same topic. So is there burnout for superhero movies? Yes, of course there is. Like, duh, come on, y'all. Uh, yeah, there is definitely burnout for superhero movies. But I think that varies from person to person. You know, I think for casual fans, I think the burnout is really is very real and very heavy because it's just like you see like the same general mythos of superhero movies, especially when it comes to superhero origin stories. You know, you have a you have a teenager gets powers, doesn't know how to use powers. Some villain who's really powerful, who's more or who's stronger than them, wants said powers. That character has to level up, and learn, go through the trials and tribulations of being a hero. Watch their friends and family get threatened because of the super villain that wants their powers. They learn how to use the powers. They beat said villain in the end. That's kind of the general uh, idea of superhero kind of movies in theory, right? That's pretty much how it kind of goes. But and I can understand why people might be burned out of it because you think you have Marvel, you have DC, you have uh, Image Comics, Dark Horse Comics, you know, you have stuff everywhere, especially with all these streaming services. There's superhero-esque uh, movies and content everywhere, so you could be a little burnt out. Especially how a lot of the big box uh, box office movies are usually superhero movies because of Marvel. Marvel is kind of, the MCU is kind of really taking that, uh, taking that place of when it comes to, like, big action movies. A lot of times... Marvel movies are like, they kind of carry the theaters recently. And people are kind of like, oh, I'm tired of seeing this character from Marvel. Or who is this person? Or I don't care about this. Especially with uh, Marvel also having Disney Plus as well. I think that's also added on to the fatigue and burnout for people. Because it's just like, okay, I got to see this in the movies. Now there's a TV show I have to watch. Oh, now there's a mini series I have to watch. And I can kind of understand that from a casual perspective. I have to keep up with all these different things. To understand this overarching story that's, you know, through all these movies that could connect. or could be... Um, you know, and credit scenes and stuff like that and little teasers to the next project and how they all connect. I can understand that. But for me, personally, is there superhero fatigue? No. <laughs> because I've been a comic book fan for a very, very long time. For most of my life, for the most part. My uncle got me in the comics. So I've been reading comics, collecting action figures, toys. I mean, my brother used to collect the superhero, like the power cards. Um, you know, watching cartoons, watching movies. Just doing all the things. Like I've been a huge fan of Marvel, DC, and some other indie comics here and there. So I'm just I'm jacked. Like when there's a new movie, this new Disney Plus show, I am there. I want to watch it. I want to support it. I want to see it because for so long, we didn't really get a lot of good superhero movies. There are very few and far between. You had like some of the Batman movies in the '80s, early '90s, like Batman Forever, which wasn't great, but. But hey, Batman Forever gave us some of the best McDonald's merch ever with the Batman Forever, the, uh, the glasses that McDonald's had. If you weren't born in the 90s, Google McDonald's Batman glasses. One of the dopest sets, bat, or one of the dopest sets of merchandise that McDonald's has ever had. It was four of them. It was Batman, Joker, Robin, and I think Mr. Freeze? Or maybe Riddler. Might have been Riddler, Batman, Robin, and Mr. Freeze. I think those are the four. So good. So if you, uh, if you haven't seen those glasses, look those up. Dope is probably one of the dopest things McDonald's has ever done in terms of merchandise. But yeah, you had like Batman, and of course you had like the Spawn movie came out mid late nineties. Blade, of course, was just massive and did so well. It was really one of the more solid superhero movies. Of course, they had some like some Superman movies in the like the seventies and eighties as well. You had Ninja Turtles. They had their run of movies, but really, when Fox kind of got some licenses from Marvel when they bought the X Men. Spider-Man licenses from Marvel. We got, of course, we got Sam Raimi's Spider-Man with, with Tobey Maguire, which is excellent, top-tier stuff. And, of course, the X-Men franchise from Fox, which is really good. So this is the first one. The first one was really, really good. X2 was okay. X3, eh, we don't really talk about it so much. But then, of course, like, First Class was amazing when we got a little bit further down the line. Then you had uh, the Sam Raimi's 1, 2, and 3 for Spider-Man. Spider-Man 3 wasn't that great. You had Amazing Spider-Man with Andrew Garfield, which was just solid. 
And you have all these things. And I can understand why some people are like, oh, I don't, I don't, maybe like, they don't like the superhero mythos. But I do like that now we're starting to see other platforms or other superhero media, excuse me, game time to shine. Like The Boys was his own graphic novel. And The Boys was this completely different way of handling superheroes. Where it's kind of, if superheroes were real, but they were like real people. So some of them were trash people. They did drugs. They were criminals. They, you know, they were phonies for the most part. And they kind of, and the boys kind of goes into that side of it. You have Invincible, which is another kind of indie of Skybound did Invincible, which is another story where it's not this traditional superhero art where you have you know mark who's like he realized his dad is, a, is an alien he learns all this stuff but he comes up with this truth about his dad and what his dad real mission was and mark gets his ass beat through most of the comic <laughs> and invincible is also a tv series on amazon prime which is coming back out in october i believe season two is when it starts check out invincible it's really really good but yeah but we have invincible we have the boys you have Kind of like all these other things. Blue Beetle just came out. Me, you know, recording this video was a superhero that a lot of people didn't really know of. You know, this this Latin, you know, this Latin, you know, Latino, Latin American hero, which you don't really see a lot of in DC or Marvel. And that he has his own solo movie. Again, it has like kind of the basic origin story, but like it did really well. The CG is really good. And again, them just tapping all these other things. You have like Miss Marvel, which I don't think a lot of people give a lot of love to. Cause a lot of people are out of Disney Plus and blah blah blah, but Miss Marvel was one of the better Disney Plus shows that came out um, last year, I believe. And you know, I can understand why people may feel overwhelmed and tired of all this stuff, but for me, I just love it because we're getting, we're not just getting uh, superhero content, we're getting quality superhero content. A lot of, for a long time, superhero content was just people just making money, like oh, this character's popular, let's just put them in some shit and see what happens. You know what I'm saying? But when you have quality stuff. You start to see what really happens. Kind of, that's why I think Daredevil on Netflix did so well. Because Daredevil is such a beloved character. But, the, you know, Charlie Cox, who was who played Matt Murdock slash Daredevil, and all the other actors and actresses and the directors and the writers loved the source material. And they took that and they just ran with it. And you had this really great reaction to Daredevil because it was gritty. It was dark. And you're like, this is some good shit. Like, it's not the kind of the... The, on the, the teenage love story or teenage angst is kind of different you know it's a little bit more ground a little more gritty that's why i think jessica jones did so well on netflix as well it's a completely different hero you might not hear a lot about jessica jones but it was just different you know with her story what she went through and just you know how she handled her powers and living life you know that's why i think she hulk i thought was a lot better than what people thought because a lot of people were like, oh she hulk is blah 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 and you know they just were being weird but she hulk was such a good story because it was you know jennifer walters dealing with that duality of her like being jennifer walters people didn't want her as jennifer walters they wanted she hulk and she had to find that balance of loving herself of loving jennifer loving her as her but also loving the she hulk side and just figuring out how to balance that and come to terms with those things and deal with her social life and her personal life and her work life and balance that all together which was a really good story you have moon knight which got to the idea of like of mental health and having dual personalities and going through that and having two separate lives in one body and trying to balance out and also kind of got into the whole idea of like morality in the mcu and how does death work how does the afterlife work in the mcu they kind of talked about that you know, things like that, where I think a lot of people thought superhero movies were all action, bang, bang, shoot, shoot. And that's not really what superhero movies are. Like, every comic isn't always going to be like uh, like uh, in-game or Infinity War Saga, stuff like that, where you have these big, massive events. Some of them are just stories of dealing with life or dealing with a certain situation. Which is why I think a lot of Disney Plus shows are actually doing as well. And I think a lot of people aren't really gravitating to it because it's not like action, shoot, bang stuff you know there's some really you know some solid ground there's some grounded stuff in it that makes you think you know eternals wasn't really a big uh action movie but it was like almost like an mcu history lesson you know they kind of were the starters like they were around since the dawn of humanity and they kind of had their little influences throughout uh, humanity and did these things that probably helped humans progress further along than they realized and you know finding out like their backstory and who they are you know i think with like uh a Falcon Winter Soldier was the idea of Sam Wilson becoming uh, um, Captain America and dealing with that. You know, a black man wearing the Stars and Stripes and how to handle that and how he wasn't sure how he should respond to that. Especially him being from, you know, the South, growing up in, you know, New Orleans, you know, Louisiana and seeing his 
his sister struggled with her kids and how do Avengers get paid and you know they couldn't get a loan from the bank you know he's a superhero who saved the world he couldn't get a bank loan like you know it's just all these different things that we don't really think about and I think a lot of other shows and projects are really starting to touch on that which I think a lot of people like want a superhero just to be always punji and high end you know CG and stuff like that but there's a lot more nuance to comics and that's in a lot of these stories and characters reflect real life situations or real life people you know a lot of people didn't realize that the x-men was actually created as an allegory for the civil rights movement until you think about it you know he realized the comedy between what mutants went through in the x-men story to what african americans are going through in america like it's really interesting and really fun and stan lee and jack kirby and all these writers always want they always brought in real life into their characters and so i think that's why it's so cool to see that now when I think that's why a lot of people get kind of burnt out because they just think like everything's going to be so flashy, but something a little more nuanced. You know, where you had the Loki series deal with time travel and Loki basically broke the MCU timeline and now he's trying to fix it and now he's going back in season two to try to figure out what's happening. He's got to deal with another Kang variant because now there's like billions, there's like thousands of Kang variants around the world and just like, you know, learning all of that stuff. And it's, it's just fun. Like if you allow comics to take you away because there's a lot of hit there's so many there's so much history of comics it's stupid <laughs> but if you allow yourself to get caught it and get kind of caught up into it you learn so much you can just enjoy everything you know bits and pieces a lot of people are like oh well i like wolverine and the x-men and that's it which is cool i think it's fine and some people just watch x-men stuff some people just watch the avengers stuff me i want to see it all like, i love learning about new characters and powers and situations and stuff like that so there's definitely is a superhero burnout is real you can kind of see it kind of feel like if you feel like people are maybe just cashing in on stuff but there's also for like a lot of the fans who have this deep love for these characters and all this content stuff like that it's not necessarily burnt out i'm just like ready to dive in more like i'm always excited for a new disney plus show or a new movie and things like that so yeah there's definitely burnout and i agree with people that feel like it's burnout and feel like oh the mcu is doing this and oh i'm sick of seeing this this and this and all oh, spandex i'm tired of spandex i get that i can understand that and it's fair now, if you just kind of want to see like here and there and stuff like that but for people like me who are hardcore fans who grew up with a lot of this stuff this is a renaissance for us we're like man we're getting like superhero stuff every month or every couple of months we get like a new movie or a disney plus show or someone's coming out with something it's crazy i love it i think we're in the best timeline for superhero content right now and i've been enjoying myself i've been in perfect bliss just watching stuff and enjoying it and talking with friends and co-workers and reading um, you know, and watching videos of breakdowns and extra stuff and hidden features and Easter eggs. I've loved it. I've been having the time of my life the last, you know, probably 10 years with the MCU and all the extra stuff that's coming out because of the MCU. I've been having the time of my life. So there's definitely superhero burnout, but I hope the superhero stuff keeps coming because I've been absolutely enjoying it. But thank you so much for listening or watching this brand new episode of the Nerd Barbershop Podcast. Like I said in the beginning, hopefully I want to start doing more podcasts, maybe at least one a month. We'll see how this goes. So this will be the August episode. So I hope I can come up with something for September. We'll keep going to the end of the year. It could end up being two a month. We'll see what happens, how I feel I recorded, my work schedule, life, and all that fun stuff. But again, thank you so much for your support. I greatly appreciate it. This will be episode 65 of the podcast. I want to get to 100 episodes. We're almost there. We're so close. So thank you so much for you know rocking with me and staying connected and listening to where you can. There hasn't been as much content, but I'm trying to get that back up and running again while balancing out the rest of my life as well. But thank you so much for everyone that supported. Subscribe to the YouTube channel. Listen to the podcast on Spotify. Listen to the podcast wherever you may listen to the podcast. Thank you so, so much. I greatly appreciate it. You know, being a content creator is not the easiest thing. It can be very lonely. But if, long, like, if one person listens, that means the world to me. So... For everyone that has gotten the podcast over a thousand plays and you know people that subscribe to it and people overseas that listen to the podcast it's just thank you so much from the bottom of my heart from just you know a kid from chicago thank you so much i greatly greatly appreciate it all the forever slice and dice and gaming it's not just a motto it's a lifestyle i'll see you in the next podcast later <laughs>